Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Marvel Comics and their social media policy, which uh, up until lately uh, hasn't really been uh, very good at keeping their people, uh, keeping their mouths shut. Mm -mm. Uh, Marvel Comics, uh, you know, really does not behave like a Disney company in that regard. We've talked about it before. Uh, we've been confused as people have worked uh, in and around Disney as to why Marvel Comics freelancers and editors were always able to just fire their mouths off. Yeah. And apparently, uh, there's a rumor that Marvel and uh, also DC are going to implement new social media policies. Now, well, they should have before now. <laughs> they should have four years ago. Yeah, when this, a lot of this drama started. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about... You know, the, the mainstream media continuing to push for the ousting of Marvel's editor-in-chief, C.B. Sobolski. Now it's hitting... It's kind of laughable at this point because it's like lockstep the way across. Yeah, it's NBC News and USA Today, uh, I think the same day or within a day of each other, using the same same photo and the same talking points. Because the same writers work across all these journals with their friends and they yeah. all talk together. So they get there they, and there's those networks behind the scenes where they date, well, we're going to go after this person now and they all coordinate. It's kind of like, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, they are. Yeah, this is all, this is all a coordinated attack. We did another video talking about that. This is really old news. Mm -hmm. Everybody who, you know, would have been offended by the C.B. Sobolski thing working in the industry. It, they already knew. They knew 10 yeah. years ago. And they already did this exact same thing a few years ago when it came out and it didn't get them what they wanted. Yeah. And now for whatever reason, they're, they're thinking it's going to get them what they want this time. So they're doing it again. And then if it doesn't work now, wait a year or two and they'll do it again. And social media is where, you know, the, the cancellation stuff is happening mostly on Twitter, and of course, you know we have have a, uh, a freelancer who was a former showrunner for uh, Netflix, Daredevil, being shocked and appalled at the news. I'm like, dude, you worked for Marvel, you worked with Marvel people. How did you not know he about knew. this? I, I, I doubt very much he didn't know. Yeah, so there's definitely something else going on there. But yeah, now the mainstream media is paying attention to it, and they'll probably push and push and push until they paid he gets pushed to it up. Last time. Anyway, before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 236,000 subs. Woohoo! Uh, 237,000. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's right. 237,000. Finally. Uh, almost 238. You kept saying 236 all the time, so I just got yeah, stuck. Yeah, we that. got stuck. YouTube does this thing where I don't know if they audit subscribers or what, but you will literally just hang at a number for a week or two until you finally jump up again. So if you guys, you know, double check, make sure you're still subscribed, make sure you ring the bell for notifications. Uh, YouTube is really bad with notifications. I'm, I'm working on a workaround right now uh, to get you guys notifications outside of YouTube. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, this is coming from Bounding in the Comics who got it from Perch, Comics by Perch, which is a, a channel I recommend. Uh, he has a lot of insight into the comic book industry. He's pretty level-headed. And uh, he's saying that he thinks that they're starting to crack down, uh, that these companies are starting to crack down. Well, it's about on, time. Yeah, but it's not because they actually care about their customers. It's more that they don't want social media blowback themselves. They mm -hmm. don't want people writing headlines about how awful Marvel and DC uh, freelancers are. Well, they already are. Well, yeah. they have the people, you know, well, it's their editor, but still, they already are writing these stories. Uh, so the new rumor suggests that Disney and Warner Brothers have gotten fed up with what their Marvel and DC Comics employees respectively are saying on social media. Mm -hmm. Again, you, you guys are four or five years too late. Damage has been done. Mm -hmm. It's been done. That's a rumor put forth by Perch of the aptly named Comics by Perch channel. Again, I recommend this channel. Uh, very nuts and bolts. Very, very uh, level-headed guy. Uh, he believes the individual social media policies of these companies are shifting in the background, and these shifts will eventually lead to a sort of domino effect across the industry. They need to. They need to have done this years ago. Mm-hmm. Perch asserts this change is coming based on recent information shared with him by an inside Marvel source who informed the YouTuber that both of Marvel's uh, parks revenue and their contracted business agreements are down in the last two years though these particular metrics have objectively been on a downward trajectory. Well, there, there, there has been so much noise about the amount of noise coming from Marvel Comics employees right. that eventually Disney is going to know this, especially under Bob Chapek. Yeah, because Chapek wants to make money, and he doesn't want to... He, he doesn't have time for this kind of shit. But I was going to say, you know, 
it's just common sense. Now, I think most times when you work for a company, it used to be the case, mm. that there would be guidelines in play. People have gotten fired because of the way they behaved on Twitter or yeah. you know Facebook or whatever, or like lies they told or they got caught or whatever. Um, and most companies aren't talking about like if someone's harassing you, clearly you can block them. Yeah. I think they're talking about the blockchains where you're blocking potential customers who did nothing, the constant, you know, politics, you know, barfing of politics all over Twitter on both sides, the constant, you know, just harassment in general by their people. And it's a bad look. Yeah, it is a bad look, especially for, for a company owned by Disney or a company owned by Warner Brothers. And uh, even if there are people internally that agree with the politics, anytime you go out there and, and take it, you know, to the nth level. And that's what happened. It wasn't just like, hey, I put my my virtue signal of the day up. It was, you know, people like Dan Slott that were actively harassing and tracking down. Yeah, and he blocked me. I didn't even know who the hell he was. Yeah, and, and he went out of his way to, to attack a, a comics YouTuber that actually was a fan of his. And this has been going on for years. Like, I, I get that they're out is, oh, they're, they're freelancers. You know, they're technically not full-time employees, but I'm like, I did work for Disney, I had to sign papers saying I wouldn't disparage people, mm -hmm. wouldn't, you know, speak for the company, wouldn't do. So Marvel Comics getting a pass for as long as they have is weird. It's it is really weird. weird. Um, uh, Perch talked about the concept of a, a double bump, which on a basic level refers to the concept of a company laying off people in two phases. Uh, double bumps happen all the time and almost always take the public by surprise. Uh, you know, multi-phase layoffs. We had that happen at yeah. DC Comics. Yeah, we already saw the process take place in DC in 2020, which is usually a sign of a, a major restructuring uh -huh. going on. Uh, the publisher had multiple rounds of layoff, uh, layoffs all across the year, uh, all of which were aimed at purging most of the publisher's redundancies. Um, those decisions were believed to be corporate ones handed down directly from Warner Media and unrelated to anyone's conduct, least of all their behavior on social media. However, Perch asserts that the wanton disregard for fans and antagonism seen from numerous creators on social media will soon change. As in the comic book industry, supervisors of uh, leaner workforce are not ones who would tolerate annoying distractions. And what is irritating said supervisors the most is the constant online activity seen from their staff. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Is this why we see all those uh, articles about Savolsky now? Well, uh, not I, because he did something, but because the media who's friends with these people, who've been shilling for these people, are trying to, you know, deflect onto this... He's the problem. If if we're going, he has to go too. If my friends are out of work, this guy's got to go. Or just to. that they're trying to deflect onto that, so people you know don't talk about. They can try to save their friends. I don't know. It just seems like a weird yeah. out of nowhere. I didn't know, and I'm gonna make a big virtue about it. All a big signal all over Twitter. It's it's right when this stuff's going down. It's weird that this stuff is going down, and it's hitting NBC News and USA Today. So. Before, when there was a brouhaha over the Sapolsky thing, it was limited to comic book news websites. Mm -hmm. It never went outside of that. I think maybe Gizmodo or you know one of those garbage sites, Kotaku or something. Now it's hitting USA Today. Now it's hitting NBC News. And it's, and it's coming, old news. It's old news. And it's coming at the same time that this, this rumor the, changes. The, that's something that's supposed to be going on in the background that hasn't been announced yet. Is he the one who's pushing for this? Well, that's what I'm saying. He's one of the ones that when they're getting rid of people and it's coming down from on high, is he one of the ones that's like, you guys have to behave yourselves. So, oh, we're going to go get him removed. But it's not, ultimately, it's not his decision. Ultimately, I'm not saying that it is what's yeah. going on. I'm just saying, it, it, it's the weird. timing is coincidental. It's, I mean, when, I'm, when we're talking about this yeah. and putting it together, I'm sitting here like, well, this is really, really odd timing. Because it's really strange they bring this up again now out of nowhere. And this one person who would have known about this, suddenly like, oh, I had no idea. And it's in all these magazines, and, or like, newspapers and blogs at the same time when it didn't get this big when it first broke yeah it doesn't make sense we're getting into disney's new fiscal year um you know because disney their their year to year it ends what is it the end of september end of, end of september end of september yeah so we're into their new fiscal year if they're going to make major changes it's going to be october november we've seen this before and they lay people off it's usually october november yeah, if he's if he's given the task of going through and getting rid of people like Dan Slott or whatever, absolutely these these people would uh, call up friends in the media and be like, "Oh, by the way." I'm by just the like, way. I mean, it could be none of this, but just when you're sitting look listen to this and listening to the rumor. Yeah. And knowing that they're doing this out of nowhere, like 
this is dumb. And they're all running with this. This is like a non-troversy and it was something that happened years ago. And now they're all just going and putting it, you know, all of a sudden it's back in the news and it's in more news and they're being ridiculous about old news from like three years ago. What makes the most sense? It's like an Occam, Occam's razor type thing. Yeah, because it, it was weird. I thought it was very weird that this this popped up out of nowhere. Um, I, I agree. I think I think Sobolski, you know, digging this dirt up on him has something to do with a, a corporate shift. Well, they're just saying they're talking about industry supervisors, leaner yeah. workforce, and yep. now that they're going after him. Yep. Um, also, I want to go back up top here for a minute. You, it also says they said um, there's a lot of different YouTuber. He's noticed how a lot of these editors mm -hmm. on Twitter have been like stopping talking about their politics and social causes all the time. And this is again the end of the fiscal year. Yeah. For um, Marvel and Disney and And you know, we've got Warner Brothers. They're in the middle of a merger right mm -hmm. now. They'll be they'll be merging with Discovery uh, the middle of next year. So they're gonna look to clean house. Yeah. I mean something's definitely up. And this this does make sense. Again, it could be completely unrelated, but I agree. He's going to be the guy who tells them, shut the hell up. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden they're trying to get him out. Yep. But even if they do, if it's coming from on high, it doesn't matter who they put in. They're going to be told the exact same thing. Yep. Uh, we got a picture of Gail Simone here. Um, he further contends that when you look at the social pages of Marvel staffers, their latest posts have been more benign than the antagonistic, with only a few exceptions. Um, from what he hears, that's no accident. Perch says it's the result of a directive from their superiors to stop it with the silliness. I'm surprised it took them this long, honestly. Yeah, because uh, that's the thing. Like, they did not see a connection between declining book sales and uh, asshole-ish behavior on social well, media. Where are, the, where are all the outrage tweets? Like we saw when Peter Samedi said that he, uh, if you're going to work with, with, with Alterna Comics... You can't be attacking fans. Now, uh, you know, good reasons aside, because they're harassing you and you want to yeah. block people, yeah. but you weren't allowed to use blockchains and all that stuff, and you weren't supposed to just antagonize fans. And he got all kinds of shit for it, and they were trying to, like, they were literally trying to bully him to the place, like, they, they him to kill himself and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, which Twitter does all the time, as we know. Yep. Um, and then they try to tell, that after someone does, they try to say that it's the other side's fault when it's, they're the ones that did it. But, you know... We saw this before. Where are all the, the comments coming out about trying to get them canceled? Oh, because it's the big ones, Marvel and DC. And you're going to get pushback and you're going to get your ass handed to you if you go out and, you know, against them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And look, uh, you know, a lot of these, you know, freelancers are, are running out of work. Uh, you know, DC especially, they're cutting back on their line. We're hearing a rumor. I can't substantiate that rumor, but this this does kind of mesh with things that uh, Ethan Van Skyver said. I, I've got from a completely different source that... DC is looking at getting rid of monthly comics altogether. They're going to go all in on trades and reprints. So there are going to be fewer jobs out there. So yeah, people are absolutely going to look at your social media behavior. And, and a lot of the bigger pros are leaving Twitter altogether. Um, they're, just, they're, they're noping out. Well, here's why they're probably not, you're not seeing these big posts with them flipping out. Um, he asserts that comic companies could begin to respond to the Facebook and Twitter posts, their so-called creatives, with potential legal consequences and the taking the noise and friction said social media activity attracts into account. Consequently, choose not to work with outspoken comics pros. So basically, if you keep it up, we're not going to work with you. We're gonna or there's going to be legal consequences because you're costing us money. Yeah. Um, it's especially true, for instance, anybody who accuses another pro of belonging to a hate group. Because voting away that you didn't vote does not make you a, a part of a hate group. No, they have tried. I mean, you want to talk about, you know, running to journalists and, and trying to, to get something to stick. They have tried with Comicsgate for the last three or four years now to get it to stick. So when you Google Comicsgate, these news articles, these hit pieces come up and you find out the same like three or four people. And if you really look into it, they have ties to comic book. Pros. Oh, yeah. It's usually, if you, it's on take long. I can usually find that stuff in like under five minutes. Um, here's the thing, though, and this is not surprise me either. It says that why is this happening? It's not because they, they care about their customers. It's because they care about like their image for Disney, for example. That does not surprise me one iota. Bad press is kryptonite to Disney. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're, they they're not doing it because they're like, well, we, you know, maybe we need to just cool it. Because No, because I, I guarantee you a lot of people at Disney agree with uh, the ridiculous tweets, but they also agree that there needs to be money coming in and, and they've seen the decline. I mean, 2017 was disastrous for Marvel, yet led to a change at the top. Sobolski was brought in 2017. They tried to get rid of him then. They tried to get rid of him then. They've been trying to get rid of him. And I had no way, I, I don't really know him, so I had no way I'm like saying one way or the other how great he is. I'm just saying, here's, I'm, I'm almost like a sports 
commentator telling you what's going on. That's what we're what we're doing. Yeah, we're, we're saying here's what's going on behind the scenes, but you're probably not seeing. Yeah, so the big wigs in Hollywood, New York, could ignore troublemaker social media as long as the spice was flowing in movies gross billions. Yeah, what's going on now is there is a direct correlation between celebrities and, and activist types and their attitudes toward fans. And again, I think a lot of these people always had those those attitudes. They just didn't have a way of verbalizing it. Well, it hasn't been this bad to the last few years either. Yeah. I mean, it used to be you voted for who you voted for, and that was, that was fine. No one, It wasn't anybody else's business. And in the sense, like 2016, you have to like tell everybody who you voted for to make sure that you're the right kind of person. And all this, this really stupid shit. And if you didn't, you're a bad person and all this other stuff. It's dumb. Um, they're getting tired of it. And it's not helping the company any. Also, if it was just these handful of hate group people they want to label a time, that wouldn't take down the industry, nor would it hurt Hollywood's numbers. Because it's not just the handful of people they're trying to claim are taking tanking it all. Yeah, it's so funny. I mean, I let, you know, going back to the Comics Gate situation, it's so funny if any other creator or any other individual made the kinds of money that the average uh, comics gate indiegogo campaign made it would be a slam dunk success they would be the media would be out there being like oh my god they made 200 300 400,000 dollars this is amazing this is incredible this is the future go comics go comics but oh some republicans did it. Uh, or yeah. no, you don't even have to be a Republican because they assume you are. Oh, yeah. Well, because there are people in comics that aren't. But then, then they're like, it's because uh, I've seen it happen. Uh, there was that, um, there was a guy's name, Dan Shaheen, who's this comics, it's how you got a talk show or whatever. He's got this ugly pig avatar. But he was on there trying to belittle uh, Van Skyver making over a million dollars on crowdfunding. And one of the most successful comic book crowdfunders, regardless of what you think of Ethan Van Skyver personally, that's an incredible accomplishment. And he was basically like, eh, that's nothing compared to Marvel and DC. But if it was one of their guys, if it was Gail Simone, it'd, it'd be, like, be oh, oh my, my God. God. Well, that and the fact that just to keep their numbers up, they're all rolling in things like a manga and stuff into the yeah. numbers to make it look like they're more successful than they are, which we've talked about. Um, I, I'm just more surprised this didn't happen sooner. I mean, of course, it's all rumor. I'm, it's all rumor. I'm betting it's true, though, given um, how Disney's already having bad image issues because they're they're nickel and diming. I can tell you from the end of being a blogger, a Disney blogger, and I know it's not just me, that people are um, starting to notice a, a um, like the, the numbers aren't there as much as they used to be on the articles because people mm. are so effing fed up with Disney. Yeah. And Disney knows it too because um, they're you know jacking prices and everything else to keep try to keep their you know oh look record breaking profits. Um, but people in general, uh, I'm on many message boards. Overall, they're just getting flipping fed up. Yeah, and Chapek's gonna look at and he's gonna be like, Marvel Comics isn't making as much money as it used to. Why? Why? Why is Marvel Comics not making money? But manga's selling like crazy. Uh, these crowd funders are doing really well. Uh, Boom sold 600,000 copies of Berserker. Well, What's wrong? If I were them, I'd be more worried about the fact that Disney's looking at where the trends are and they're starting to shift towards those trends, which we're going to talk about in another video. Yes. And if I were these people, I'd be more concerned about that. Yep, you are replaceable. So we're going to wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.